Hi and a very welcome back to all of you. Today we are going to start with a new topic in the unit of plant pathology which is prevention and control of plant diseases. So we are going to learn that how can the plant diseases be controlled in different ways. Right? So for that the two important terms that we need to understand are prevention and control. So prevention is that it is uh, a measure that is applied to prevent the occurrence of a disease. Right. So all the techniques or measures that we use to prevent from the disease to happen is called prevention. So as of now the plant is not having any disease the field is not having any disease and we are trying to prevent the occurrence of a disease so we do not want the disease to happen and therefore the measures that we take are called preventive measures right and the difference between prevention and control is that that control refers to the measures that are applied to prevent a transmission after the disease has occurred so even if we prevented we tried that the disease should not happen but anyhow the disease has entered inside the plant in the plant right so now the measures that we take to prevent the transmission of this disease that has occurred is called control measure so now the disease has entered the plant and so we want to prevent its further transmission its further spread and the measures that we take to prevent its spread that could be um, really widespread then such measures are called control measures so prevention is something that we um, stop from entering into the plant and control is after the disease has entered we try to prevent its transmission so then that is called control measure so this is the main difference between both the terms so now that you know the difference between prevention and control we move towards our topic that is the methods that are used in plant disease management or the control methods right so this disease management methods are basically divided into uh, four types these are excluding the pathogen from the host eradicate or reduce the inoculum immunize or improve resistance and use of direct protection methods so first is excluding the pathogen from the host now the methods that are included in excluding the pathogen are called regulatory methods right why is it called regulatory we will be learning that shortly for now you can remember that all the methods that are included uh, for excluding the pathogen from the host are called regulatory methods that that is here we are excluding the pathogen from the host we are trying that the pathogen does not enter the host then the next type that is eradicate or reducing the inoculum here there are types which are cultural methods physical methods biological methods and chemical methods so all these methods all these four methods are included under eradication or reduction of inoculum so here what happens that the disease has already entered and so we are trying to remove to prevent the disease to spread further by this method and the first type that i told is preventive measure where we are trying to um, not allowing the pathogen to enter in the host so this is excluding the pathogen so this is a preventive measure which include regulatory methods and beyond this the eradication part is 
कंट्रोल मेथड वेर वी आर यूजिंग दिस मेथड्स दीज आर कल्चरल फिजिकल बायोलॉजिकल एंड केमिकल टू इराडिकेट द डिजीज दैट हैज ऑलरेडी एंटर्ड इन साइड द प्लांट देन द थर्ड वन दैट इज इम्यूनाइज और इम्प्रूव द रेजिस्टेंस so here we have resistant varieties cross protection induced or systemic acquired resistance defense activators right so now another method can be that we even if we are trying to exclude the pathogen and even if we are trying to eradicate the entered pathogen still we are not able to take control of these diseases then there is a way of producing resistant varieties which are resistant to certain diseases so we can produce resistant varieties and this type um, explains about that right and then fourth is the use of direct protection method right so this direct protection method and biological method are somewhere related we will look into it later on so for now you can remember these bifurcations right so okay so now we will uh, start with each of this uh, one after the another but today we are only going to cover the regulatory methods which is a preventive method and uh, the two control methods that is the cultural method and physical method the rest we will continue in the next lecture right so we start with the understanding of exclusion or regulatory method now why is it called a uh, regulatory method because this is regulated by government right so this required the government agencies to restrict or direct the activities so any activities related to um, plant pathogen interaction or any activities that helps in preventing the entrance of the pathogen this all activities are governed by government right so therefore it is called regulatory methods and these are all the federal and state laws right that regulate the condition for cultivation of crops so these there are very various laws that are prepared by the government so that um, diseased plant or infected plant do not enter the country right so these are called the regulatory methods as it is governed by government now these regulatory methods are divided uh, into quarantines and inspection evasion or avoidance of pathogen use of pathogen free propagating material and coating the epidermis so these are the four types of regulatory methods that can be used and are used in the prevention of plant disease so we will look into each of this one after the another so starting with what is quarantine and inspection so quarantine i think is already a very familiar term with all of you now during this covid time also we have understood what is quarantine so it is a state or a period or place of isolation in which people or animals or plants that have arrived from elsewhere are kept right so a place where all of this anything when comes from outside is kept for isolation for a period of time so then that is called quarantine now for those who do not know quarantine is a latin term and it literally meant a period of 40 days right so a period of 40 days is given for the isolation of any thing that comes from outside so quarantine is important because when something comes from outside it may be infected and if not kept in quarantine then these infected parts this infected animals or plants or people can further increase the 
infection and we all uh, we all already know what is quarantine so not going deep into it now this plant quarantine act in india uh, this plant quarantine act was in, uh, introduced in 1914 so according to this act um we can prevent the introduction of destructive pest so any pest that is destructive to the plant has to be prevented also there should be prevention of inoculated soil what is inoculated soil inoculated soil is the soil in which already spores and uh, infection uh, strands of the organism is present so that soil is called inoculated soil so that soil has also to be prevented so that is also included under this law and uh, it also prevents the diseased plants from other countries so we all we know that um, during transportation certain plants or anything is brought from other countries so these plants might be diseased so uh, such diseased plants has to be removed or has to be stopped at certain place so that it does not enter the country so this is done under this plant quarantine act now this therefore the plant quarantine act is a legal restriction that is regulated by government and therefore it is included under regulatory method now to carry out the work of this quarantine there are certain plant quarantine stations at work at and these are at major sea ports and airports so wherever ships comes or wherever um you know wherever these uh, aeroplanes comes at those places plant quarantine stations have been established so a plant that enters that reaches the country boundaries goes into the quarantine center so all of these plants that has arrived the country from other countries will will be taken into the quarantine centers so these quarantine centers are present at airports or seaports or nearby airports or seaports so these quarantine centers um will then keep these plants for certain days that is for a period of quarantine these will be kept in this the plants will be kept in this centers and if required all kinds of tests will be carried out at this quarantine centers and uh, after the test uh, if the plant material or anything of the plant that has been brought if it 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 is free from pathogen if it is found free from pathogen then it will enter the market of the country but if it is not found free from the pathogen then it has to be restricted so either it might be burnt or it might be removed from the country or any any possibility that restricts the plant from entering the country all those steps will be carried out since it is not free from pathogen so in the quarantine centers there are all kind of laboratory facilities also available where tests are carried out and these tests ensure that the plant material is free from pathogen right so in gujarat also there are quarantine centers present some example one or two example that i can give for quarantine centers are at kandla port that is in kutch district and also in bhavnagar right so kandla port is a sea port similarly bhavnagar also has sea boundaries so like that there are many quarantine centers present in each state and in every state in many cities right so this is about quarantine and inspection where the new plant that has arrived 
is tested for any kind of presence of pathogens at quarantine centers and this is a preventive measure because we are preventing the disease from entering into the plant right because if we do not do that then the plant if enters the country will infect every other plant that will come in its contact and this quarantine and inspection is accompanied with crop certification so what is crop certification these are various standards that tells uh, that uh, what farmers have followed to show that that crops are grown in way that respects the environment so these are standards that the farmers follow and these standards ensure that the crops that are grown are in a eco friendly and environment friendly way where the pathogen is not present in the crop so any crop also when it enters it has crop certification right so this is accompanied in quarantine itself right so this is about quarantine now we understand the second type of regulatory method that is evasion or avoidance of pathogen so evasion or avoidance simply means to escape something from by trickery right so we already know what is the word avoid but evasion specially it means that to escape from something by cleverness or by some trick so when we use some tricks to avoid the pathogen then um, it defines this step which is evasion or avoidance of pathogen right so we are using certain tricks to avoid the pathogen in short right so these are mainly of the following types so it is choosing the climate unsuitable to pathogen isolate crop vigorous seeds planting date distance between crops and well drained soil let us let us understand each of this in a bit more detail so to choose climate that is unsuitable to pathogen so if you remember we had just learned about the disease triangle where i had mentioned that when even the climate is not uh, suitable for the pathogen to grow then even if the host is present and pathogen is present then also the disease will not happen so we have to choose a climate that is unsuitable for the pathogen right so we can understand this with an example of um uh, bean seeds right so bean has uh, a pathogen infects bean this pathogen is a seed born pathogen right so this seed born pathogen of bean can grow very well in humid regions but it will not grow in dry regions right so what we require uh, is dry regions so to avoid this pathogen which is causing disease in bean right we will require dry regions right um because dry regions is the place where the pathogen will not grow so for the pathogen to grow humid region is required so we should not grow bean in areas where it is humid so if you grow bean in humid areas obviously this pathogen is going to attack so better you grow pathogen in dry um, better you grow the plant the bean plant in dry region so the pathogen will not attack and this will lead to a good crop right so accordingly we need to choose the climate then second is isolate the crop so any crop that is suspected or infected right has to be separated so any plant that is already infected by pathogen has to be separated from the healthy plants and if you think suspected plants means if you think that this plant is also going to be infected then 
better remove those plants also because these can further spread the disease so isolating crop is very important now let us understand what are vigorous seeds vigorous seeds are uh, the very strong and healthy seeds that are full of energy are called vigorous seed right vigor means full of energy right so vigorous seeds are strong and these are seeds that rapidly germinate so since they are healthy they will germinate rapidly right so we need to use vigorous seeds now these seeds and seedlings are larger more viable and more more vigorous right so these seeds since it is healthy it would be larger it would be more viable that is it would be um, it would have more probability that it will germinate and it would be more vigorous so we require such seeds because when a seed is healthy it will not get diseased right um, this is a common understanding that when something is healthy when something is healthy from inside it is obvious that any disease is there it is not going to attack a healthy body right so this is the idea behind having vigorous seeds so in the market also vigorous seeds are available so these seeds how do we identify that what are vigorous seeds for that uh, a, a bunch of seeds are taken and they are kept in germination and the seeds that germinate rapidly than others are considered as vigorous seeds there are also other tests but uh, this is one among them so vigorous seeds is important because that will not get diseased easily but if a seed is weak seed is a slow seed then there is a uh, probability that it will get infected now the next way of avoiding the pathogen is remembering the planting date so you should always keep in mind the right time for the plant to grow because um plant is not going to grow in every season and even if it will grow then there will be probability that the pathogen will attack the plant because what do i mean by right time is that every environmental conditions should be proper for example temperature of the soil should be right temperature of the environment should be right the soil ph should be right so there there must be a proper time at which the planting will be very healthy and the planting will be very good so you need to keep in mind of the planting date that um, that will give a good results in growth of the plant then distance between crops now distance between crops is very important because by distance we mean space right so space between two crops is important because it will provide air circulation so if you plant two crops very close there will be less air circulation and more pathogen right so if there will be proper air circulation then pathogen attack will be less and uh, there is also probability that pathogens may not travel long distance so if you keep distance between two crops so there might be chances that the pathogen will not travel from one crop to another crop easily because since there is space between two crops so this is also a good preventive method to stop the spread of pathogen so we now understand what is um, well drained soil we know that a soil that can easily let water pass through it is called a well drained soil so we require a well drained soil for a plant to grow why because when the soil is not well drained then the soil will become more wet 
because it cannot uh, it it is not allowing the water to pass through it so therefore the soil will remain more wet as the soil will remain more wet um usually most of the soil born diseases happen in wet soils so if you have wet soil then there are many chances that soil born diseases may spread or may happen so some examples are damping of seed decay root rot crown rot all these are results of soil born diseases due to wet soil right so we require a good well drained soil for um, avoiding the pathogen or escaping the pathogen so these are some of the tricks that we are using to evade or avoid the pathogen now the point to remember here is that uh, since these are enforced through regulation this is enforced through government regulations and therefore it becomes regulatory in nature but these same methods are also cultural in nature we will understand what are cultural methods these are methods that are traditionally used so all these methods are usually traditionally used but uh, we have kept it under regulatory methods because uh, since it is enforced by regulation so this same method can also be cultural it is actually cultural in nature and can be included in cultural methods but since these methods are excluding pathogen so it has been included here right so therefore we are including it here since it is excluding the pathogen but then it can also be included in cultural method right so this is about evasion or avoidance of pathogen now we understand the use of pathogen free propagating material okay so whatever propagating material that we use so propagating material could be seeds or could be any vegetative parts so these could be seeds tubers bulbs or any nursery stock so these all are these all are propagative materials from this new plant grows right so all of this propagating material it should be free from pathogen so because if it would be inf infected with pathogen then obviously this will lead to disease so again this falls under quarantine right where all the propagating material is to be ensured that it is free from pathogen so pathogen free seeds if we want right how can we obtain it Act so for that we have to obtain by growing the crop so when we grow a healthy crop a vigorous crop from that a good produce of seeds will be obtained so we need to ensure that these plants are pathogen free so then the seeds that will be formed will be pathogen free so how can we obtain such plants that are free from pathogen what we can do we can grow this crops in an area which is free and isolated from pathogen that is we need to prefer area which has no pathogen or we need to prefer an area which is unsuitable for pathogen as we discussed before or we need to prefer an area which is unsuitable for vector so now you need to understand what is vector vector is a kind of mediator right vector are organisms that carry pathogen so these could be insects these insects can carry pathogen and when these insects they feed upon the uh, pr uh, plant body so it will lead to infection so we need to keep in mind that whichever area we are uh, considering for the crop to grow it has to be free from the pathogen it has to be unsuitable for pathogen and it has to be unsuitable for vector so when seeds are grown in such areas which are unsuitable for pathogen and free from pathogen uh, such seeds are tested for bacterial and fungal pathogen so 
whatever seeds that are grown they are tested for the presence of bacterial and fungal pathogen as i told all kind of uh, laboratory facilities are available at quarantine center so they can carry out tests they can observe under microscope and identify if any bacterial or fungal pathogen is present so they use their appropriate techniques required to ensure that the materials are free from infection right so if it is not free from infection then it would be discarded but if it is free from infection then it would be passed further for further processes so there are seed testing laboratories available at quarantine centers which help in seed tests so many laboratories are there in quarantine centers now when we use vegetative propagating material so from where are these obtained these are obtained from the mother plants obviously for example if we use potato potato is a tuber and it is a vegetative propagating material so it is obtained from the mother potato plant so these mother plants are tested and shown to be free from pathogen so these plants are also tested in the laboratories and when it is found free from pathogen it is um forwarded for further processes and these tests that are carried out are taken in intervals to ensure that even in between in the time interval also um the disease has not appeared so tests are taken in small intervals also right so like this tests are carried out for all kinds of propagating material to ensure that it is free from pathogen now we come towards the fourth kind of regulatory method this is coating the epidermis so in this method coating is done so what is coating it is the application of exogenous materials on to the surface so on surface of plant parts exogenous materials is applied then it is called coating right so here we are coating the epidermis so uh, also the seed parts can be coated and also uh, the all separate plant parts can be coated so this coating can be done on seeds and also it can be done above ground parts so all the parts that are present above grounds can also be coated and even the seed which is present below ground can also be coated so this coating can be of three types that is waxy coating pesticide layer or insecticide layer and a polythene covering right so what is waxy coating Uh, as shown here in the figure if this is a seed the brown portion is a seed we need to apply a layer of wax as shown here in the figure the pink color is the wax so we apply a waxy coating so what will happen if we use a waxy coating the pathogen will not be able to infest the seed but if the coating might be absent then there are uh, chances that the pathogen might enter so same is the case with the pesticide layer and insecticide layer what can be done is over the seed or over the any propagating material that we are using we need to apply a layer of pesticide or insecticide over the seed or the vegetative part so if we apply the pesticide or insecticide we know what are these these are going to um Uh, reduce the growth of any kind of pest or insect present so these will not allow the pest or insect to grow so this is applying a layer of pesticide or insecticide over the seed right so later on these can be removed uh, there are methods that are used to remove these layers and the third type is using a polythene covering so for example if we are uh, using if we are um, transporting a vegetative part which is tuber 
right or any root ठीक right so over this vegetative part we can uh, wrap polythene covering right so if we wrap polythene covering very tightly what will happen that um, these coverings um, will reduce the evaporation of moisture so moisture will be retained in the in the vegetative part and also even if any pathogen will try to enter because of the polythene it will not be able to enter so in this way we can um, make coatings over the plant parts in different ways by which the pathogen will not enter so this is it about excluding the pathogen which was a preventive measure and uh, this is called these are called regulatory methods so now we move towards the understanding of cultural methods right so cultural methods are methods that are uh, all the activities of man used traditionally and which are aimed at controlling diseases so why is it called cultural is because cultural methods are used traditionally and uh, this has been used um, by men for um, many years before also and uh, this is usually aimed at controlling diseases so all the activities used traditionally are included in cultural methods and these cultural methods are without the use of chemical substances so no chemical substances are used in cultural method okay um one more thing to understand is that evasion uh, uh, sorry exclusion that we learned before is a preventive measure and now that uh, the method we are starting is um, what we call as control method right so this is a cultural method and this is included under control method right so this cultural methods are host eradication sanitation crop rotation conditions unfavorable to the host traps and mulches and improving the growing conditions of plants so these are the various cultural methods that are used traditionally and we are going to understand each of this one after the another so the first cultural method that we are going to understand is host eradication right so now though we try to prevent the entry of pathogen but uh anyhow the disease has entered the field right so since the disease has entered the field now we are trying to control the disease so that it does not spread further so therefore now we know that the disease has entered so all the measures that we will be taking um are control measures where we are trying to further stop the spread of the disease so this host eradication aims at controlling the spread of disease so as i told despite of all kinds of quarantine pathogen may enter the host and this can lead to epidemic so the pathogen from one host can enter many hosts and therefore it can lead to epidemic so if we want to stop this epidemic we have to remove the infected plant so whatever the infected plant is it has to be removed and if we remove the infected plant then we can say that pathogen can be removed so only if we remove the infected plant the pathogen gets removed so now this is usually done in all kinds of nurseries plant nurseries greenhouses and fields because these are the places where many plants are present together 
right so we do not want all of the plants to get infected so in such places uh, the whole plant that is infected is removed to prevent disease now here host eradication can be done in two ways there are two things that we need to understand so first is eradication of alternate host so this we can understand with an example of puxinia graminis puxinia graminis is a pathogen fungal pathogen that infects wheat plant right so this puxinia graminis the main host is the wheat plant right but this um pathogen can also grow on an alternate host right which is called barberry plant so this is the alternate host which is the off season host right so what you need to understand about alternate host is that these are host used by pathogen during off season right so what happens actually is that wheat plant is a rabi crop right and rabi crop is grown in winter season right so what happens during october to december sowing of the seeds of wheat is uh, carried and from march to may uh, harvesting is carried out right so the this this particular pathogen can infect the wheat plant from october to may that is from october to december which was sowing season and then from march to may which was harvesting season so till then up to may the this this pathogen can infect but after may this host plant is not available because since it is harvested so there is uh, nothing remaining in the field of this plant so what this pathogen will do puxinia graminis it starts growing over barberry plant right so barberry plant is the alternate host and this is the off season host because this is the season when wheat is not available so when wheat is not available it will start growing over barberry plant but its main host is wheat plant so it will grow in this plant and then later on when again october will come and wheat plants will be uh, so, um, sown right so then again this will enter the wheat plant and they will infect the wheat plant and then when they these will be harvested this will again uh, start growing in the barberry plant so this is the alternate host over um, over which the host over which the pathogen grows in off season so it is very important that we eradicate the alternate host so to stop the infection to happen it is very important that along with the wheat plant we also remove all the alternate host because if we do not remove the alternate host it will these these pathogens they will complete their life cycle here and then they will again infect the uh, uh, new wheat plant so one thing is eradicate eradication of the alternate host right so why do we need to um, remove the alternate host is because when this host is not available it starts growing over this and uh, when it starts growing over this it acts as a reservoir of primary inoculum right you already know what is primary inoculum the first inoculum from which primary infection takes place so this becomes reservoir of primary inoculum from this primary inoculum primary infection will take place in the wheat crop of next season right so this is important to er eradicate even the alternate host and the second thing to understand is eradication of collateral host or volunteer plants this also falls under host eradication so what you need to understand now is what are collateral host right 
so plants that act as reservoirs of pathogen are called collateral host but these are different from alternate host in the way that alternate host uh, in the alternate host uh, these pathogen they can complete their life cycle but in the collateral host the pathogen is not going to do complete complete its life cycle because collateral host has nothing to do with the life cycle of the pathogen it only acts as a reservoir only uh, the spores will survive in this host but it is not going to uh, start its life cycle there whereas in alternate host these uh, pathogen they will even start their life cycle so this is the difference between collateral and alternate host so um these are also called volunteer plants because uh, these are all weeds that grow by themselves so they do not require any specific care they grow by themselves and therefore these are called volunteer plants so they are volunteering to grow right so these are called volunteer plants and these are also called overwintering host or over summering host or self sown host right why self sown because they are growing by themselves over summering host because um okay i will explain these two terms um, right now in some short time so for now just remember what is self sown host volunteer plants and collateral host these all are same these two terms are also same but um, it is explained in different sense right so it is very important to eradicate this collateral host also this we can understand with the example of uh, pathogen xanthomonas oryzae which causes bacterial leaf blight this mainly infects rice plant right so the main host of this pathogen is rice plant and uh, its collateral host is cynodon dactylon which is also called durva grass or in gujarati it is called daro right so xanthomonas oryzae requires rice plant as the main host so this is its main cereal plant whereas this is the collateral host or the volunteer plant see um, as you can see this is a grass it is a weed and it is growing by itself so it is a volunteer plant it is a self sown plant right so what happens is this xanthomonas oryzae um grows in rice plant so rice plant is basically a kharif crop right kharif crop means it is grown in monsoons so from june to july sowing is done and from november to december it is harvested so after december that is from january to um up to when june comes this host is not available right so from june to december up till when the rice plant is available xanthomonas oryzae will infect this rice plant but as after december it is not available so during that time this will xanthomonas oryzae will uh, remain in the collateral host which, which is cynodon dactylon right so it will not complete its life cycle year but the spores they will survive over this host right so as the spores uh, will survive here so this is uh, this acts as a reservoir of the plants or uh, reservoir of the pathogen so again when in the next season rice plant will be available this will start growing over the rice plant so um here we can understand what is overwintering host so this is a overwintering host how because after december that is uh, from january january february march all these are winter months right so the pathogen has to survive the winter months and it survives over this plant right so therefore this plant is called overwintering host where uh, 
this pathogen it survives over uh, this plant in the winter till it gets the rice plant right so this is overwintering host so likewise what is over summering host this is the time the summer time when the host is not getting uh, sorry when the pathogen is not getting host to complete its life cycle so a plant over which the pathogen will complete its summer time is called over summering host right so this is uh, over wintering host where the pathogen survives winter and this is over summering host where the pathogen survives summer right so this is about collateral host and it becomes very important even to remove these collateral or volunteer plants because if you don't remove it these acts as a great reservoir of spores and these can later on infect the cereal plants so a uh, important term to understand here is rogging right what is rogging rogging is uh, referred to as the act of identifying and removing plants with undesirable characteristics from agricultural fields so it is the process it is the act by which we remove all the plants which we do not need which are not desirable uh, from the agricultural fields so that is called rogging so this could be asked in one line where you you may need to define rogging right so okay so i hope this is clear now we move towards the understanding of crop rotation i think all of you already know what is crop rotation but then a brief about what is crop rotation it is the practice of growing a series of different types of crops in the same area across a sequence of growing season so we have one area some acres of land right and in that area we are uh, growing crops one after the another and these crops are different right so for example crop 1 we are growing in winter season crop 2 we may grow in summer season crop 3 we may grow in monsoon season so like this we keep on rotating the crops and this is actually very helpful in um, controlling the plant disease so this is the oldest and cheapest method adopted right it is cultural method and adopted traditionally because monoculturing is not good so what is monoculturing when in an area we continuously uh, grow one single crop every year and every season then that is called monoculturing monoculturing provides opportunity for perpetuation of pathogenic organisms in the soil since you are growing one same plant in the soil so the soil will be uh, tremendously infected with uh, this pathogenic organisms and year after year you will have crops that will give less yield right so it is very important to rotate the crop because if you rotate the crop the pathogenic organisms will also uh, move away so due to monoculturing soil born pathogens of that crop they easily pe uh, penetrate in the soil and increase in their population right so the soil born pathogens they increase in their population in the soil itself so uh, let us understand that what is the basic of crop rotation system we can understand it with this very simple diagram so how uh, do we rotate crop first crop that we grow are legumes okay so we know what are legumes legumes are all the plants that are nitrogen fixing plant right so they fix nitrogen so they obtain nitrogen from air and fix it in their roots and then this nitrogen goes into the soil right so these are um, nitrogen fixing plants right so they provide nitrogen so examples of such plants are beans peas moong etc right so all the pulses that we eat are legumes uh, 
so the very first crop to be grown in first season is legumes right so these plants they will enrich the soil with nitrogen now the next plant that is to be grown is leaf okay uh, these are leaf plants that have large leaf like brassica lettuce like cabbage spinach right so all of these are very large leaves so we need to now grow leaf plant in the next season why because leaf plants are nitrogen dependent crops right so they require more nitrogen so the nitrogen that has been fixed by legumes in the soil will be used by these leaf plants so as they will uh, have more nitrogen they will grow a uh, very large beautiful healthy leaves and uh, that way the nitrogen in the soil will be utilized by leaf right so the leaf plant will become very healthy because of nitrogen so the next bunch of plant that we need to uh, grow in the next season is leaf right now after the leaf plant we need to grow fruit plant in next season why because fruit plant they do not require much nitrogen a little amount of nitrogen is enough and uh, but they require good amount of phosphorus phosphorus is important for them to set blossom and develop fruits so if we want fruits and flowers then it is very important that phosphorus is available this phosphorus is made available by the soil uh, that was present during the propagation of leaf so as the leaf plants were harvested now the soil has good amount of phosphorus so this phosphorus will be utilized by fruit plants right and these uh, fruit plants will give a uh, good amount of blossoms and good amount of fruits and that is what we need it does not require much nitrogen so whatever little nitrogen is present there this will be utilized by fruits and uh, phosphorus present will be utilized by fruit right so the example of fruit plants are tomato squash pepper etc right now the next crop that we are going to grow is in the next season which are root plants right so these root plants need potassium to grow and uh, they do not require nitrogen so these root plants are onion garlic carrot beets etc so these root plants since they do not require nitrogen already the nitrogen is over by the time the fruits have been grown so now the soil is not having much nitrogen so the roots uh, require potassium which is then provided by the fruit plants as the fruit plants were grown the soil was having good amount of potassium so this potassium will be utilized by root plants and a good uh, storage parts will be formed like tubers bulbs right so this will give a good results now by the time roots are grown and harvested the soil has no nitrogen as it has no nitrogen so now again we will grow legumes so legumes will fix the nitrogen it will enrich the soil in nitrogen over which again the next crop could be leaf crop right so this is about the crop rotation simple system and this is very important because uh, crop rotation has many benefits we will look into it now we can also perform intercropping what is intercropping in the same field we can uh, grow different crops for example this orange one is crop 1 and green one is crop 2 so in one strip we can grow crop 1 and in the another we can grow crop 2 again we can grow crop 1 and then again crop 2 like this we can use various patterns as shown here there are there is one single row in alternate way and here it is mixed cropping like um, randomly crops have been grown so this is intercropping this also has um, very good results 
right so let us see that what are the benefits that crop rotation has so crop rotation works to interrupt pest and disease cycle the the very main important point is that crop rotation will interrupt the disease cycle see for example there is a pest that is of legumes right so what will happen is that these pest will grow over these legumes by any chance but if you change the next season crop obviously this pathogen is not going to survive because this pathogen is only pathogen of legume so it will not grow over the leaf and that way it will die right so like this every plant have their every pathogen require a different host so if you keep on changing the host the disease cycle will be interrupted then it helped returns nutrients to the soil as i told we use legumes to restore nitrogen we use leaves leaves right to restore phosphorus we use fruits to restore potassium so all of this will restore certain nutrients and this is good for uh, crop plants to grow then different crops release some biochemical substances so every crop is known to release certain biochemical substances and these biochemical substances has uh, two benefits one is that these biochemical substances are known to kill the pathogen and another is that these biochemical substances encourage the development of antagonistic microorganisms antagonistic microorganisms we are going to under understand in more detail in uh, biological method but for now you can remember that these antagonistic microorganisms are kind of useful organisms for us right so crop rotation has all these benefits which are very important for the control of plant disease and this is very effective for pathogens which survive only on living host imagine if a pathogen survives only a single living host and if that host is been taken from the field then the pathogen is not going to survive because it will not go on any other living host so this is very effective on um, pathogens that survive only on living host right now um, i talked about intercropping intercropping is also very useful for example if you see there are two crops planted in the same field so like this even three crops can be uh, planted in the same field so what will happen is that um, pathogen of one plant is not going to infect the another plant because it requires only this host and if there are three two to three crops used in between so what will happen Uh, the pathogen will not get enough host to infect because it will have to travel a long distance to reach the uh, host of its uh, concern right so in this way intercropping can also mislead the pathogens right so now we understand what is sanitation so we already know the term sanitation it refers to health conditions where we use proper cleanliness methods and proper disposal of waste so that everything is maintained hygiene so the various sanitation methods that can be used to avoid um, or to remove the pest are destruction of sources of dis disease infection right so whatever source of disease infection is there it has to be destructed right so if a plant is completely infected by disease then that whole plant has to be pulled out and if only a part of the plant is infected with disease for example leaf then that leaf has to be removed from the plant 
so any source that leads to dis uh, that leads to disease infection has to be destructed then second sanitation method is weed control right so as i told before this weed if you remember can act as collateral host right so collateral host can act as reservoirs so it is very important that you remove the weeds from the field because if you do not remove they can be the reservoir of pathogens then third is make yourself clean it is very important when you work in the agricultural field you clean yourself your hands your face whatever you carry your clothes has to be clean so when you um, work in field use gloves use mask and uh, very important use uh, things that sterilize surfaces sterilize your hands right because you can yourself be the carrier of the uh, disease you can your, uh, yourself be the carrier of pathogen right so it is very important to make yourself clean then crop residue management these are residues that are left after harvest so what can be done with these residues is either it can be burnt or it can be buried or or compost can be made from this so if we make compost from it right so a good organic matter will be available for the soil which is good for the plant and if we for example if the a uh, residue is infected then obviously we will have to burn the residue so that it, it does not cause infection and next sanitation method is cleaning the farm tools so there are various farm tools that that are often used so every farm tool has to be cleaned regularly because when you carry out farm activities this leads to uh um, there may be chances that these will have sometimes spores of the pathogen and this can lead to further infection so very importantly it has to be sterilized and cleaned regularly and the next sanitation um, important method is plowing right so plowing under the crop residues and organic mulches so crop res residues are often kept in the soil to cover the soil and organic mulches are used to uh, cover the soil we will understand what are mulches but for now you can remember that both of these are used to cover the soil so plowing is very important to perform under this because plowing controls weed you know what is plowing it is um, you know kind of tillage where we are um, like kind of disturbing the soil so that any other things if present in that can be removed for example if weeds are present these can be removed as i told the weeds can be collateral host reservoir of pathogen and if we remove these weeds the pathogen can be controlled so this removes the weeds this also makes uh, soil aerated so soil aeration is performed so as the soil will be properly aerated the pathogen will not survive pathogen requires more damp condition right so plowing can help in uh, reduction of disease right so this is about sanitation now we understand that how we can create conditions unfavorable for pathogen so we need to create conditions of in which the pathogen cannot grow we discussed this before also so now we just look briefly what are the conditions that becomes unfavorable for the pathogen these are aeration of products so whatever uh, storage products are there you need to aerate it properly air should be circulated properly because if air is circulated drying takes place proper, properly so pathogen cannot attack but if it is damp it if it is wet the pathogen will attack 
proper spacing spacing is very important because more the spacing more the circulation of air and uh, less chances of pathogen traveling to large spaces proper drainage there should be proper soil drainage because if water will uh, get drained easily from the soil then it will not remain much wet appropriate fertilizers should be used flooding the fields is al also important now what is flooding the fields flooding the fields is like um, when the harvesting has been completed for some time we can um, flood the fields with water we can fill it with water so this is also a good measure of uh, uh, preventing the pathogen controlling the pathogen because if you flood the field it is completely filled with water and when you flush out the water so the spores uh, will not survive in that flooded field it requires damp environment it but it does not require totally water conditions so all of this will become unfavorable for the pathogen to grow and this will lead to reduction of the pathogen so in this way we can create unfavorable conditions uh, which will lead to the reduction of pathogen now let us understand what are traps and mulches these two are different things traps are um, any external thing that we use physical thing that we use to trap the organisms then it is called traps so one kind of trap is polythene traps in this way it is attached to the stem of a tree right so what will happen that the organisms they will uh, fall into this trap and they will not be able to come out this is a polythene trap then another trap is light traps so using light of various kind to attract the insects to it will lead to its death but but this has pros and cons also it has um, disadvantage also because uh, many beneficial organisms also are attracted to light and which is not good because beneficial organisms will also be killed another trap is pheromone trap pheromone are chemicals that are emitted by females uh, female uh, insects to attract the male right so in a little home like this it could be handmade pheromones uh, these chemicals can be kept so the male will get attracted to it and they will get trapped in this so this is called pheromone trap since pheromone is a chemical we can include it in chemical methods also but since this is a trap so it has been included in traps and mulches then another kind of uh, trap could be pitfall traps now as you can see this is the soil layer over which this the trees uh, the plants are growing so what we can do is we can uh, make this kind of pit in the soil kind of uh, we can dug the soil and we can keep some bu bucket inside filled with uh, fluid which has chemicals right so what will happen this is mainly used for crawling organisms so the organisms that will crawl over the soil they might know not know that there is a pitfall trap there is a pit and therefore they will fall in this like this the organisms will fall in the fluid and uh, this will lead to its death right so this is pitfall trap then this is sticky traps or sticky cards which are usually yellow this is also called yellow cards this is kept in the field right so what happens that most of the insects and pests they get attracted to yellow color and this yellow card is covered with um, what we say Uh, a sticky substance which is not dryable so this the substance remains sticky over here and as the flies attach here attract here they get attached to it so this is called sticky traps or sticky cards now we understand um, a little bit about mulching uh, 
mulching are the um, is the method of covering the surface with some external material so we cover the surface of the soil with some material then it is called mulching and the material used is called mulch so an example of mulch is reflectant aluminum organic mulch and polythene mulch right so reflected aluminum mulch is kind of a reflective material uh, this is used to reflect light on the leaves right and uh, this is very important mulch because this is actually this is a polythene material in this way it is uh, grown or uh, covered over the soil only the leaves are visible so what this reflectant material will do they will um, increase the amount of light and they will increase the amount of temperature and also photosynthesis now since light and temperature will be increased the pathogens cannot survive in very harsh conditions so they will be killed and since um, the soil is covered with this kind of reflectant material so the pathogen cannot enter in the soil and if and since path photosynthesis is increased so the plant will be much healthy now when a plant is healthy that means that it 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 will be uh, not prone to attack by pathogen right now the next kind of mulch is organic mulch organic mulch is any kind of um, plant material or any kind of natural material that we use to cover the soil so these are the bark pieces so we can use bark pieces or we can use um, dried leaves as covering so this helps in protecting the soil and then next mulch is polythene mulch as shown here in the figure you can you must have seen these kind of uh, coverings in agricultural fields these are used for protecting the soil from the pathogen right so the pathogen will not enter the soil and like this good amount of uh, healthy crops can be formed so these are traps and mulches which can be used to reduce the pathogen now the last point for today that is improving the growing condition of plants now apart from whatever uh, we saw today we learned today uh, a very important point is improving the growing conditions of the plant so it is very important that we actually make the plant healthy so our main focus should be on uh, on production of plant that are healthy right so how do we get healthy plant by providing all the pro proper environmental conditions when a plant will have all the proper environmental conditions it will be healthy so this could be sunlight temperature proper soil conditions and soil conditions also if proper soil aerations proper soil drainage essential moisture all of this is required by the plant in proper amount it should also have adequate all the nutrients all the micro and macro nutrients should be adequately available so this can be provided by um plenty of organic matter like compost so we can give a uh, compost to the plant so it will provide all the nutrients and all of these things will be uh, accomplished by providing compost so a plant is when healthy then such a plant is called a vigorous plant as we learnt about vigorous seeds so these are healthy plants and when something is healthy it is always immune to attack because the pathogen will only attack first plants that are weak and susceptible susceptible means plant that are prone to disease so weak plants are prone to disease and such plants are attacked by pathogen first so our main focus should be uh, making a plant healthy 
by providing all the proper conditions because when a plant till is healthy it would be immune to attack same uh, is applied in our body also in human body also um recently also we just uh, learned about immunity right where because of uh, covid situations we saw that those people those people who are healthy who are immune who have good immunity they will uh, they usually don't have disease whereas the people who are weak and more prone right are uh, about to have disease right so this is the same concept we need to have a healthy plant more healthy the plant more immune it will be and as it will be more immune uh, very less probability of diseases so this topic is not complete yet it it is a la um, big topic but for now today we keep it this much we will be continuing um, this in the next lecture right so i hope you all will clear doubt regarding this and if you have any question please ask me so for now you can subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribe and hit the bell icon